All right, that's it, folks. This is EDM 2021 closing ceremony. Already, I feel like I was welcoming you like some hours ago. It's been very, very hectic three days here. But here we are again together to say goodbye to this event. So this session, nonetheless, is not the least interesting of all the sessions we have had. Maybe it's not a scientific session, but I think you will be excited about some things we have to announce you here. And among the many announcements we have to make tonight, we, there are, of course, the best paper awards, and I, I hope like all the best paper authors are with us um, tonight to see who has won. And we will also announce in this ceremony the location for EDM 2022, so don't leave just yet. But first, as you follow this ceremony one last time, please don't forget to make jealous to all of those who missed out by tweeting using our conference handle and hashtag again. I remind them to you one last time, EDM Conf 2021. And also, even if you are now well familiar with it. Uh, and don't forget also the speak up. We have a special speak up for that final uh, ceremony. The link is there, bit.ly slash EDM 2021 closing. I, get, I leave you one minute to copy paste it. So don't hesitate to use it to react to this session or to also give us a general feedback about EDM 2021 in general, what you like, what you dislike. I was hearing. Uh, Neil, when I arrived, complaining about having to walk in the other town. So if it was too much work for you, please let us know. We will try. We will suggest a smaller home next time. Anyways. Oh, uh, it was good. It was good. <laughs> it was good. It was some workout <laughs> to all these months stuck at home. So I think everyone has clicked on it or copy pasted it. So now first part of this last session, let's try to take a few minutes to remember the past days together. So what were the highlights of EDM 2021? We have selected some for you, maybe there were many in our opinion, but maybe yours is not there. So feel free to tell us on the speak up if there is something that you think should have been there. So let's see what we had. So no particular order here, but let's see. First, we had two very nice poster session in Gather Town, like I've just mentioned. Uh, in both poster session, I've counted over 50 participants at once. Uh, there, that was the first home of well, those of you who were there on the poster session for the first poster session. The second poster session was this morning and same thing, over 50 participants at once. So everyone moved from poster to poster and I hope that after the, there was a little bit of a learning curve, I think at first to know how to use the environment, but I think eventually everyone find, managed to understand it. So I admit that I counted the participants from Gather Town, so it might not be the most accurate counting ever. I simply checked the number that was visible in that moment, so I don't know what necessarily these people were actually doing. I mean, we all need a little break sometimes, so I see that some participants during the poster session enjoyed <laughs> going in other rooms, like the Tetris room. I don't know if you had all noticed the Tetris room, but some participants have definitely found it. So. I respected the privacy of this participant, didn't display his name him here, yeah, but come on, after all, Tetris is a classic, so it deserves a test of time of its own, a word of its own. So moving on and staying in Gather Town, uh, I hope that you were able to enjoy the, our little concert on the very first day. Uh, I know not everyone could be there, but I think those of us who were there already enjoyed it. Uh, it was Julien Simoni who played for us in front of our, our own Musée d'Orsay, or one hour, and uh, there was even a little bit of a spontaneous blind test happening in the, in the chat uh, dur during that concert. So it, I think it was already a, a fun moment for everyone who was there and kind of unexpected to see someone playing on the piano like that in Gather Town. And then earlier today, I know that some of you were also there to enjoy our cut party and our chef, Aliza Morov, who gave you like a very traditional French recipe for crepes. And uh, I've seen that many of you experimented in their own kitchen. It was not very easy for some of them. I know to run from the kitchen to the computer. Not everyone has a great setup for that, but I know that some of you have tried. And I hope that right now, as you're attending this ceremony, you are able to, for some of you to be eating some delightful crepes. What else did we have? Well, we had three amazing keynotes and i'm really super happy about the three key, uh, keynote uh, speaker we had all the keynotes were great i said three keynotes but in reality we were lucky this year to have almost a fourth keynote with the with cristobal romero sorry cristobal i don't have <laughs> i didn't have time to add a screenshot of your keynote earlier um but i think it was really 
some exciting moment. And for those of you who maybe missed some keynotes, uh, the first two keynotes are already on Uva. If you missed the talk from Christina or from Sydney, they are already accessible on, on Uva. The talk from Pierre and, Christo and Cristobal will be added tomorrow. And uh, bit by bit in the days to come, the sessions also that were recorded will be added as well in Uva. Uh, we, did, we prioritized the plenary session, but you will be able to re-attend everything if you missed something or if there were two parallel sessions and you were forced to go to one of them and miss on the other one. And finally, uh, the, the, the screenshot is not very sexy, I, I admit, but nonetheless, the discussion that happened during that panel was definitely worth staying up late for those of us in Europe. So in case you missed out, uh, it will also be available on Uva tomorrow, like the it was registered, it was recorded as well. And uh, so it, I'm talking, of course, about our panel on fairness, equity, inclusivity, and bias. Uh, I know a lot of you took part in it, but if you couldn't be there and you are even remotely interested in, by this question, and you should be interested by this question, um, please go and check what was said during this panel. And, and if you want to contribute and could not be there, don't hesitate to reach out to uh, Anna, uh, Anna Rafferty and to Sherry. We'll be able to, to let you know how to contribute if you could not be there. So unfortunately, I don't have a baguette to give today. Uh, so it's 10 p.m. in France. So we have already finished eating all our bread for the day. But I am going to still give it to Jilgen to, to continue and tell you a little bit why we, we are going to say that EDM 2021 may not be entirely over just yet for you. Jilgen, are you here? Yes, um, thank you. <clears throat> so thank you very much to all session chairs who did a great job in uh, making sure that the sessions uh, do not go over time and everything is good regarding the questions. Uh, so yeah so the question is what what do what can we do next so indeed um as you can see the virtual website that we um what we put will stay online so you can go to the next slide it's a it's a mini conf it's some um some framework that is used for the machine learning conferences so we thought it would be nice to have it for edm this year so as um, all the content is up uh, you can uh, take time to check uh, what you missed like uh, you can maybe you can still keep asking questions to authors if the authors uh, keep uh, reading the speaker. The videos of the keynotes uh, that were recorded will be also uploaded, uh, and so does so do the live sessions. And already the keynotes from Christina Conati and Sidney Di Mello are on Huva if you're interested. And the, the final PDF of the proceedings will be uh, yes soon. So as you can see, like there is a there was a nice uh, logo on the front page, the, the first page of the slides. So this is a cool design, right? So you would like maybe to, to have it, um, next slide, on a t-shirt, right? So then uh, we, we can uh, do this for you. So we will send you a final form again to get the t-shirt size for all of you. And um, we don't want to burn too much uh, kerosene and money. So we will send those t-shirts by batches to the university around the world for all participants. So, so stay tuned for this final form. Yeah, because we, we think it's a, it will be a good moment, a good way to, mem to remember EDM 2021. OK, so now I will uh, leave the award session to uh, Sharon and Sherry. Hi. So this is a moment that many of us have anticipated so far, right? So let's see what the awards are gonna be. I just give you, give you a heads up because we were telling the votes uh, for the best presentations um, until right now. So may, we may need to reshare this whole thing, but yeah, uh, we to, continue. Maybe to refresh, I can, I can refresh. Okay. Just yeah. close the share. It will be a little bit of suspense for a minute. Yeah to make sure we don't end up with a slide without the name of the paper was one that would be said. We do this. And let's get back. Do you see the screen again? Yes. Right. Keep yeah, going. Cool. So uh, we start our awards with outstanding reviewers. These reviewers were the ones who have done an extraordinary job 
writing comprehensive and detailed reviews. They were on time, they provided suggestions on how to improve the papers for the authors, and they mentioned relevant literature, for example. So they were doing really good jobs, and uh, we thought it's it really worth it. We have to give them something as like outstanding reviewer mentions or awards. So here is the list, uh, a round of applause for all of them. I hope you. Um, and of course, uh, thanks to all the reviewers, uh, but these uh, were the list who did really a very good job. I'm not gonna read all of the names, but uh, they are ordered based on <laughs> their first name alphabetically. So next, we are going to have the best poster presentation of EDM according to 2021, according to your votes. So these are the ones who you have chosen. Drum lord. Yes. Now, the best poster presentation goes to poster number 276, are violations of student privacy quick and easy, investigating the privacy of students' images and names in the context of K-12 education institutions posts on Facebook. Many, many congratulations. And also we had two runner-ups, uh, poster number 126 and 192, uh, the cold start problem and interpretation of knowledge tracing models and predicting young students' self-regulated learning deficits through their activity and self-evaluation traces. So many, many congratulations to all of you. You did a great job. Um, for the ones who wants, want to look back uh, on the posters, they can use uh, what Jirjan mentioned. So they are going to be on the website and they can go watch the videos, look at the posters and the papers. So uh, that is um, the best poster. Now the best paper presentation of EDM 2021, again, according to your vote. So people were voting until like right now, drum rolls. And the names are going to be, first of all, session B2, early prediction of conceptual understanding in interactive simulations. Congratulations. And the names, actually Sharon is pasting all the names of the authors in the chat. So uh, sorry that we are, it was so last moment. <laughs> uh, the runner-ups, we have another paper from session H2, studying retrieval practice in an intelligent tutoring system. Yay. And session D1, combining cognitive and machine learning models to mine CPR training histories for personalized predictions. Okay, so these were the community votes uh, for the best paper and poster presentations. Uh, I think we have to go next. This is a repeated one, right? The best paper yeah, presentation. Sorry, the last minute, <laughs> last minute edit. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, Sharon, should I continue or you wanna? Oh yeah. Sure. Um, oh. You could go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. 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 So, um, so you remember the best short paper nominees that we had um, combining cognitive and machine learning models to mine CPR training histories for personalized predictions. You saw that also it was a runner up for the best paper presentation. Um, do common educational data sets contain static information and statistical st study? Knowledge transfer by discriminative pre-training for academic performance prediction and using keystroke analytics to understand cognitive processes during writing. So a round of applause to all of the nominees. They were all really good. And the best short paper of EDM 2021 is do common educational data sets contain static information? Statistical Woo! study, yay! Congratulations, Theo, Florent, and uh, Fabri Fabrice, sorry. Um, so that is good. Now, Sharon, please take over. <laughs> All right, next slide, please. Well, congratulations again for the best short paper. 
All right, so here are four uh, nominated full paper. Well, first one, early prediction of a conceptual understanding in interactive simulation, which we just saw the best uh, presentation. A second one, early prediction of a mu museum visitor engagement with the multimodal adversarial uh, domain adaptation. Third, improving automated scoring of a student open responses in mathematics. The fourth one, just a few expert constraints can help. Humanize, uh, humanizing data-driven sub-goal detections for novice programming. So draw rows, please. I would like to uh, mention that the full paper acceptance rate is only 22%. So the best, the first one, we have two awards. The best, the, the best student paper of EDM 2021 goes to <laughs> the suspense. Early prediction of conceptual understanding in interactive simulations. Congratulations again. <laughs> All right, uh, next up. The best full paper of EDM 2021. Are you ready? Goes to just a few asper constraints can help humanizing data-driven sub goal detection for novice programming. Congratulations to the team. Congratulations to all the nominees. It's a huge uh, honor and privilege because the acceptance rate is so low. So congratulations to all of you. The papers will be available on time uh, on, online. All right, I'll pass the mic to Didi. All right. Um, hi, everyone. I am here to present the Test of Time Award. Uh, next slide, please. Um, next slide, please. Sorry. Okay. okay. The the Professor Ram Kumar EDM Test of Time Award is made possible through a generous donation from the Professor Ram Kumar Memorial Foundation. We give this award annually to papers published in the Journal of EDM, the International Conference for EDM, or the EDM Workshop prior to the conference. Um, the criteria is that the paper must have been published at least eight years ago, and it must stand the test of time, meaning it it had a strong influence and continues to have a strong influence in corresponding research uh, in, in uh, yeah, subsequent research in EDM. Okay. Next slide, please. These are the past winners. We've had uh, data mining to classify students, the state of educational data mining in 2009, predicting student dropout, and an open repository for analysis tools for fine-grained longitudinal learning data. Next slide, please. In order to read more about the award, please go to the EDM website. Next slide, please. Uh, the awards committee, well, I, I was chairing it this year and I wanted to thank our members, Ken Kedinger, Manolis Mavrikis, Andrew Olney, and Nikola Perchensky. Uh, what we did was we had six papers that we nominated uh, we also considered the papers that had been nominated in the past. We shortlisted the three papers and then we voted among the three papers. Next slide, please. The suspense. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. The winner is the paper introduced the Q matrix method to the field of EDM, where it has become a unifying concept in representing, evaluating, and discovering knowledge models from data. And the, and our winner is- Can you guess? <laughs> I know, right? The, spoiler alert. Uh, the Q matrix method, mining student response data for knowledge, Tiffany Barnes. Congratulations, Tiffany.
we really need to have the video camera, you know, like at the Academy Award to see folks happy at their table. <laughs> so that requires we all be sitting at tables in suits. Yeah, right. So congratulations, Tiffany, uh, for like what might be the best year ever um, with both being both on the best paper and on the test of time. Um, so I'm here to introduce the uh, next award, which is a new award, the best publicly available data set award. Next. Um, this was created by a generous donation from Schmidt Futures, and it will be given annually to an educational data set that's publicly available and that is useful to the educational data mining and other research communities. The first award is gonna be made this fall and there'll be a $2,000 prize. Next. To nominate a data set, which could be your own or somebody else's, please fill in this form. There's also an email that went around on the EDM announced mailing list a month or so ago and on learning engineering and other lists, but go to this link, fill in the form and all nominations have to be received by July 17, 15 days from now and then the committee will make a decision. So we look forward to seeing your, thank you. Uh, we look forward to seeing your, um, your nominations and your data sets. Thank you very much. Okay, I suppose I should uh, take it from here, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, Right, so, uh, well, I suppose it's all in one slide, so you can guess what I'm going to announce. Uh, so I'm very happy to announce that EDM 2022 will hopefully, uh, all things considered, will physically come to Durham uh, University, and I chose a pretty picture there to, to show you where it goes. Uh, the current dates are uh, to be confirmed, of course, but uh, we uh, had a little brainstorming and it seems that 26th to 29th of June looks reasonable so far, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll finalize them soon enough. Can I have the next slide, please? Is somebody clicking? Yes, <laughs> sorry, but sometimes when I click twice, we, we get a spoiler after <laughs> one second. Oh. I think it's been a long, conf whoops, long conference. Well, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Only to no, remind, remind people where the uh, UK is and then <laughs> slide, it's fine if, if you, it's not a spoiler, you can go on. <laughs> right, so Durham is over there. So it's, if you look around it, it it's full of uh, natural areas. I think that that's possibly also to highlight uh, Lake District uh, uh, that uh, you might have heard of. Uh, uh, from various uh, authors that are famous, Yorkshire Dales, uh, uh, North York. So you can do a lot of hiking and, well, if you need social distancing, there's lots of social distancing. <laughs> okay, next, please. Right, so a few more pictures. So uh, Durham is a, a real English uh, small town, gorgeous architecture. Uh, think uh, Harry Potter in, in many ways. Uh, actually, part of it was filmed here. Uh, but it is, if you really are desperate to see the big city, there it's close to Newcastle, which is relatively big. And uh, of course, I told you already about the Lake Districts, all the pictures uh, above are from Durham itself and the pictures below are from the area. Okay, next, please. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, whiskey, I can see the whiskey. Whiskey is more Scotland uh, side, so you, you can uh, take a longer trip in the to the distilleries. It's very nice there. I have done that myself, I must admit. Uh, so various uh, pictures of the castle. The interesting bit about the castle, by the way, it's that it's student accommodation, right? So if you're lucky, you might even get uh, uh, to, to stay at, at the castle yourself <laughs> as, uh, as your accommodation. So it's a very pretty town and uh, a lot of it is owned by the university. Next, please. Uh, so a few more pictures, just to give you a bit of a flavor, oldie worldy town. Uh, uh, thank you, next. Uh, and even more pictures of, uh, well, when we had the less social distancing, I must admit. So I think that it's much, much, much emptier now and people wear, unfortunately, masks. But other than that, yes. Okay, thank you, next. <laughs> so 
So a bit about the university itself. So Durham is, uh, is a top university in the UK. It's also the third oldest in England, uh, and it's been in uh, the top 10 for a while. Uh, it's also the world to uh, top 100 university. Uh, and what is interesting, it has the collegi a collegiate system, which is a bit like uh, in uh, uh, Oxford and Cambridge as well. So uh, basically students belong to these, um, to these colleges. And actually the, the picture, uh, so the castle itself is one of the colleges and there are several other colleges. Uh, the picture on the bottom um, right is uh, from uh, the dining hall in the castle, which can be booked. So depending on how many we are, we could possibly have our dinner there is, is a, a thought. Okay, next please. Uh, right, so the organization team. Uh, so uh, I'm leading it, but uh, it's uh, from two departments uh, in the university. Uh, computer science ranked eighth in the UK and education ranked first in the UK. Um, and uh, we have uh, a few people named here, but uh, we're going to expand this, uh, uh, this theme, uh, uh, basically. Um, okay, thank you, next. Right, the dates I already mentioned, and uh, we're going to keep the structure. I think a lot of things were done right, and I was listening uh, a lot about, uh, also, I, I like the fact that a lot of people were given credit, so I really enjoyed that. So I think that we're going to definitely have some good lessons learned from, uh, from the current uh, um, runoff of this conference. And we'll see. I mean, if, if necessary, of course, we can do things online as well, or we can do some partial things online. One of the things we were thinking maybe workshops online, but uh, uh, it's, it's a negotiable thing at the moment. Um. <laughs> Okay, and okay, in case you don't know how to get to Durham, uh, it's not that difficult. So it has itself two airports. So uh, one in Newcastle and one uh, Durham Tees Valley, which are pretty much 30 minutes by cab. Uh, but if you really want to fly into London, you can then take the train from London. Uh, and it's a direct train, you just sit on it, you have to get to London King's Cross. But from there, you just sit in the same train all the way. If you're a bit more adventurous, you can come by sea, for instance, from Amsterdam, you can take the overnight uh, ferry. Uh, so <laughs> it's also a way to, to get here. Okay, and uh, there's various things you can visit. Uh, I've, I've showed you the beautiful uh, countryside, but of course you can, the castle itself, there's a beautiful tour that actually is run by student volunteers and cathedral, uh, also a lot of history there, Durham itself. There's interesting school visits, perhaps, especially because we're many, well, we're all in education uh, and colleges, if you're interested to see how the colleges work, uh, library, botanic garden, oriental museum, we have some actually very good collection there. If by any chance we can't do it physically, I'm thinking also perhaps having some online tours of some of these things. Okay, <laughs> and, and that's it. And if you have any questions, just, just ask me now or later, also good. Thank you so much, Alexander. We really appreciate all your hard work to put together the uh, uh, application and we're so happy to, to be coming to Durham. I, I sure hope we are coming to Durham by next year. Yes, and it looks wonderful. A lot of great opportunities. Uh, yeah, so um, I have a couple uh, uh, um, board announcements and uh, next slide I hope is animated. Yeah, if you can step through it once more. So in October uh, 2020, we had uh, an uh, expiration of service of board members. If you click once more, thank you to Sydney DeMello, John Stamper, and Tiffany Barnes, who served on the board for six years. Uh, we had an election and elected three new board members in October, and they are, uh, we welcome them, Anna Rafferty, Neil Heffner, and Tiffany got reelected. Um, and finally, uh, we had a new president elected. And guess what? <laughs> Tiffany, once again, <laughs> Tiffany, this is your day uh, for sure. Um, so uh, if you can click once more, as I hand off my president role to Tiffany, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased to do so because I think the uh, society is going to be in great hands. Um, I do want to 
thank all of you for making EDM so great. And it's been a real pleasure to be in this role. I also want to say I'm not going away. Um, I will still be here to uh, to to uh, trying to withhold my enthusiasm to ask too many questions at at uh, talks uh, um, and and to continue to join you all. But let me. Um, I don't have a baguette, but uh, I am going to symbolically hand off uh, an iPhone here. Uh, to Tiffany, if we can pull this off. Tiffany, I think you have to speak so you can be next to me on our display. Are you there? I'm speaking. Am I now next to you uh, on the I display? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, is that working? All right, here you go. The symbolic passing of the presidential iPhone. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was without a rehearsal. Pretty good, Ken. <laughs> um, well, uh, thank you uh, for electing me as the next president. I'm, uh, as I said in the chat, uh, you know, y'all are my people. And thank you for selecting uh, one of my papers for the Test of Time Award. And uh, like I said, I'm delighted to be the next president. And thanks to Ken for uh, the last, I think it was three years. Is that what, is our term three years or is it two? <laughs> I think it's been two, yeah, for me, yeah. Um, two and an apostle renewal. Okay, great. So thanks for the last uh, two years of service. And uh, was it four? I just wanna make sure I don't say the wrong thing. Um, so thank you very much, Ken. And thanks to all the board members who have just stepped down and all the ones who continue to serve. Um, I think this is a wonderful community. I would love to um, have us recognize our program chairs and conference chairs again for this year. Uh, they have done an amazing job. I think uh, it's extremely challenging to pull off an event where people get to feel like they saw some people that they, that they knew at the conference and got to have conversations outside of just the papers. I think that was accomplished. Uh, Gather Town was fun. Um, people used the speak up to ask questions at talks. Um, and I think, you know, we did get some conversation, good conversations going after, after the talk. So congratulations on pulling off an extremely difficult task uh, to do this online. I know we all wish we were in person in Paris. Uh, wouldn't that be so wonderful? Um, so thank you so much to Gilles Jean and Francois and uh, the entire team, um, Sharon, Sherry, uh, lots of other people were helping out. We had a lot of good um, session chairs who really helped out a lot. So um, thanks to everyone. I don't think I have any slides to present. Is that correct? We, we didn't make you any slides yet, <laughs> President Barnes. But <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't expect anybody to, and I didn't have any. Um, so, you know, as, as we move forward, I uh, look forward to continuing to have great conferences and grow and expand our community. Um, I think that our uh, formats have been really great for doing that. We're always open to you know, new ideas to, to make our uh, work more inclusive and our field and our conference more inclusive. Um, so uh, I think I appreciate also the conference organizers for having patience with the board who came to them and said, hey, we'd really like to have an extra event around um, fairness, diversity, bias, and inclusion. And they stepped up and helped do that um, yesterday. And I think that was really valuable because all of us want to have these conversations about how to be more fair, more equitable and transparent and, and propagate those values in our work. So um, just tremendous amounts of effort went into this event. And uh, we just wanna thank you for all those efforts and um, you know, wish everyone uh, an excellent summer and look forward to seeing the great work that you're gonna submit to EDM next year. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, it was great. That's a great one. You guys did such a great job for us. And and I want to add an extra thank you because you worked hard in preparing uh, uh, for us to come there as well. And, and we didn't get to see that, but uh, uh, we recognize that uh, not only the hard work we saw, but extra hard work was part <laughs> of it. We'll never see you. <laughs> yeah. It might be fun to get a couple of pictures of, of who's here if anybody wants to turn on their camera and like take a picture. Oh yeah, good idea. Get the whole gallery. Let's take a whole, whole group camera photo. sharing. 
Stop staring the screen and then you can. <clears throat> Stop sharing. Who is uh, sharing? Okay. All right. Does someone, one of the conference organizers, want to take the picture so you put it in the right folder? Yes. I will <laughs> on Google it. Drive. Three, three times, maybe. Yeah, we got to take a few screens. Right. Everyone will get actually a different picture. Oh, it's, that's really nice. <laughs> Smile. But do the EDM sign. Oh, yeah, we need the EDM sign. Yeah, I don't know what EDM sign. We had a sign. Adam is doing something, but. Yeah. <laughs> no, Adam, not that. EDM. <laughs> so There's shall we count down? Cameras. Looks like we got a lot of cameras there on. So. Benjamin at it. <laughs> How about we count? Uh, after I count to three? And who's taking the picture? Is it uh, Francois or? I tried something, but I, I don't know who I had on the picture. But <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll count, and you can it's do nice it. To, it's nice to see that many faces. Yeah, <laughs> this right. is not One, so common. One, two, three. Yeah. One more. One more. One, two, three. Cool. Okay. All right. Yeah, you, you, you should prepare. You should send everyone nice placard with the word EDM. So everyone will show that at the very last slide. Mm. Next time we should do that. Oh, next time should not be the virtual, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so I have I have been at events that sent out like a package to everyone, like, you know, of, of things to wear and food and things to play with. Uh, if they weren't Before already the planning for being in person and then online, maybe we could have done that. Yeah, I'll, I'll settle for what you shirt. That's okay. <laughs> um, it, we do have some time here, uh, I guess, in our scheduled program. Uh, we got through the, those topics quite fast. If anybody has any questions or suggestions, uh, it'd be great oh. to hear from the community. In the chat, there are some questions. So for Ryan, there's a question that says, can a data set be an entire repository like data shop? Um, we're looking, uh, because data shop is so big, we'd be thinking of specific data sets within the data shop repository. It's a great question. So yeah, yeah. data shop folks nominate your favorite data shop data sets. All right. So the, another one is thank you for the whole experience and knowledge people, five people voted for that. Two votes are for how long will the videos be available after the conference? Does anyone know the answer to that? Yeah, so I commented that um, it's just like proceedings, it will be open access forever. Yeah, the videos are actually uploaded on YouTube. They will be associated to each uh, of the WUVA session that they were presented in. So you can go back in WUVA in a few days and you will be able to see the videos. But then uh, we, we will also get, send you the links for the announcement at some point about the, the YouTube channel. So you can go and check them directly on YouTube. So don't uninstall WUVA or like at least check and keep it for a few days to get our notification still we won't we will spam you less we promise but you will still hear from us yeah we need to send you the the form for the t-shirts but yes and uh, thank you for our two old sponsors uh, of course because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do the t-shirts there were many uh, uh, there's one question it. about how many people attended do you do you have the attendance numbers yes we went beyond 400 Yes, I think we were around 405 person registered. There so Alexandra has, has an issue. I also have Alexandra's first. So your hands. Uh, I do, I do if it's okay, but you had your hand before me, so. <laughs> uh, well, I just wanted to say that uh, basically one of the reasons we are uh, not completely uh, finalized with the next uh, dates is Possibly I should also announce it that uh, it's going to be a co-joint with AIED. So AIED will also be in Durham. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're sort of uh, thinking of, uh, you know, how to move the Lego pieces together so that they fit well. And this is uh, the current, uh, well, problem solving <laughs> situation. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're looking forward to seeing you all there basically. 
Uh, and I, I have a different topic. I, I kind of like when conferences kind of walk their talks, so they apply their technologies to support what they're doing as a, uh, as, as a community. And I kind of like this virtual conference this time because we use data to allocate papers on the three-dimensional scale. That's, we're using data for ourselves. And I wonder, can we do next step before the next conference? It's so easy to extract key phrases. It's data mining, standard things, right? How about extracting key phrases from all papers from this ATM and maybe three before? That would be a great way to see how the field is going on. There are some very simplistic ways of doing that, but it was before we started to extract key phrases really well, right? I wonder would anyone be eager to take on that, whoever is kind of um, closest to key phrase extraction? I'd yeah, love actually, to see the results. Actually, when I, when I saw it the first time, I was really impressed. Uh, I'm not sure all of you understand what uh, Peter is talking about, so I will also share my screen, but actually, I have five percent battery, so if it dies, it means it's over. Um, basically, like here on the papers uh, tab, you had a, a visualization. Yeah, that is great. Yeah, yeah. So, so well, you could basically like um, actually we we didn't have the abstract of all documents when we did the visualization, and then you can figure out that um, on some side you have like Bayesian knowledge tracing, or another side you will have knowledge tracing, and so on. And educational data mining documents. So this is done from the keywords that were in the papers, but we could actually take the whole content of the articles. And this was done a lot uh, by the machine learning community. And I was I was really surprised that they did it so that uh, any community can do it with their own data. So this is basically educational data mining, data mining. It's, uh, the next yeah. Level so let's do more with that. That is a great start. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Peter, one of my my students, Ryan, already has has a paper basically uh, on uh, yeah doing something like that as well uh, on basically looking at uh, the past twenty years of uh, research in an area, and we have that, the software. The software is open source, so actually it's it's available, so you can get it and hack it and do stuff with it. Yeah, we have two students who do a really good job on key phrase extraction, but both of them are defending about. Well, half a, half a year. I don't think I will persuade them. Besides, they're not in the DM field, they're in the NLP field. So we need somebody internal who is motivated to do that. So Spinning off your idea if you do of, of applying our research to our conference, uh, um, here's, a, here's a challenge for you, for you to next year. Uh, can we have uh, someone or some ones do active learning uh, presentations of their research at the conference. Wow, right, constructivist. Everyone is silent. Um, maybe you can elaborate well, we more. What exactly the would you like formatting to instructions to allow for it. Yeah, we can do the the uh, swap the classrooms size, right? Like everyone with conference papers at home, and we'll just go there and discuss it. Free I guess day. Alexander, you asked for elaboration. Um, I gave a keynote at Learning at Scale a number of years and 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 tried the following, uh, which was um, I had a a link to a, um, a Google Form pre-assessment before my talk, and then. Uh, after my talk uh, had a, a, a post assessment uh, and it was pretty interesting it, it you know like like a lot of active learning it it, it changes the preparation it's you know not not easy to uh, to write good you questions. need a control group I mean you're going to keep a few people taking the test that didn't do it or something <laughs> oh we'll, we'll find these people there are so many part things of, in the room. part of what's interesting and challenging is, you know, is there something surprising about what you're talking about such that uh, people, uh, you know, have different intuitions initially and then then the talk changes their their thinking. Uh, I think that's the that's an ultimate challenge. Uh, yeah, that, that, that sounds interesting. Yeah, because I mean, in general, any learning experience, one would hope that one learns after it because, yeah. Oh, Tiffany, why don't you announce that post you just made? I think that might've been from Anna. So someone posted that they really appreciated the panel with the breakouts yesterday, and then someone commented on it on Speak Up, and I was just pasting it into the chat in case people were not paying attention to Speak Up. So was that Anna? 
Yes, that was me. Um, and also on Whova in the uh, community section, there's a link to the notes from that section as well as a link to this form. So if anyone wants opportunities to think more about this, um, I was I loved how many people were engaged and yesterday. And if you have some time and you want to think about it, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, I think uh, several of us were thinking that it, it might be nice to to have something like a working group of people who were interested in continuing the conversation around um, equity and fairness and bias and those sort of things. Um, and I think Anna has graciously uh, volunteered to organize us until she can't do so anymore in November. So from now till October, she'll be our point person. So if you would like to join in on that conversation, um, we're trying that out as a as a new activity for the society. I don't see any other speak up comments. Jill is going to keep the conference going all year until next year. <laughs> Definitely. Well, you will receive your t-shirt in some time, so that will give you a little bit of memories of EDM. I think we need crepe making classes on our calendars. Or the next step in French cooking. I, I thought it was just add butter to everything. Is that wrong? <laughs> the problem with the cooking class is if we're all in Durham, we'll have to have our own kitchen set, you know? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I, 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 I didn't mention cooking at the end for, for, <laughs> for the British. Stick with the whiskey. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that will uh, <clears throat> get down with that or, you know, nice, nice beer. We will try to import all the food we had planned for you at EDM 2021 to EDM 2022. I wanted to share one thing that we mentioned at the board yesterday that I'm not sure everybody knows. Um, and that is that um, we're really proud that educational data mining as a conference has almost always been about half students. I'm not sure if that's the ratio this year, but almost every year, uh, about half of the participants have been students. And also you should know that our best paper awards uh, are usually um, selected in this way. We get a set of best papers and then the, the first one, you know, the one that gets the most votes is the best paper. And the second one is usually the best student paper. So you should know that the best student paper isn't just, um, you know, six papers that are by students and then we pick the best of those. Almost all of our papers have student authors and all of the best paper nominations this year had student first authors. So almost every year, the best student paper is actually, you know, in the top of all the best papers and is really a, it's like a second best paper award. Uh, so I think in some conferences, best student paper is like a minority of people, uh, but that's not the case here. So I wanted everybody to know what high quality uh, we're getting with best student papers. And I'm really proud of, uh, how well the students do and that we make lots of venues for students to present and, and be able to get uh, mentorship and advice at this conference. You're here. I mean, it's the students who make us all look good, right? <laughs> Coming up with new ideas and bringing in lots of energy and uh, helping us, yep. you know, then graduating and running conferences. <laughs> it's good. A volunteer for the sessions. <laughs> it's uh, when you, when you are virtually, it's really hard to find volunteers. But yes, thank you for to all volunteers. Um, okay, so I think uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you to all sponsors. Thank you to all chairs. Congratulations to everyone who got a paper at the conference. Everyone to uh, who attended and everyone who got an award. And congratulations to Tiffany Bans for having a so many awards in a row, so <laughs> yes. So thank you so much and uh, we'll keep in touch. Uh, have a great uh, day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank great you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good work. Do more good work for next year. We're excited to read it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. We did it. Bye. Yes. <laughs> And by Sherry and Sharon, it was oh, great to meet us. Same here. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. You. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Jill Dan. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you everyone. Great Thank job you. for the conference team. Amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.